Well, so congrats on your new album. First Thank of you. All. <laughs> Thank you very so, much. <laughs> I wanted to know that our video and I was like nine ish years inactive, and after a long mm -hmm. wait, you released your second album, Desolate. So, could you tell me how this new journey began? Absolutely. So, um, I would say uh, the band went on hiatus for most of that period of time, most of those nine years. And I say it probably wasn't until the last two or three years before the album came out that they actually started to kick it off again. Um, and that was the hiatus was because of multiple reasons, but primarily uh, all the members, aside from myself, because I didn't join until much later, all the other members were busy with other bands or with work or with life or whatever else. And uh, it just kind of came to pass that finally, after all those years, they got into a place where they were able to meet up again and kind of resume where they left off. And they had all these new ideas and uh, had developed as musicians and uh, they wanted to kind of present a new face to the world for Ophidia and I, and that's where Desolate came from. And uh, yeah, they're very happy. We're very happy with how it turned out. Yeah, it's a super great album. It's very original, you know? And my personal favorite song is Spiral to Oblivion, because I think that it's the most catchy riffs in the whole album. I don't know, I just love it so much. And how came the idea to mix technical that's awesome. and dead metal? It's like a very, very weird mix, but very worthy. It's amazing the mix of those subgenres. Yeah, thank you so much for saying so. Um, it, it's, it's just, I guess, what it really comes down to is all of our individual influences musically. Uh, we uh, we obviously take huge inspiration from you know, the big, bigger names, more established names in, in death metal and technical death metal, specifically, uh, necrophagus, spawn of I possession. Oh yeah. Obscura, uh, you know, all the classics and a lot of the more modern ones too. Um, uh, the, the guys that w were kind of coming up around the same time that Ophidian was, um, you know, Zenith passage and fairy, uh, first fragment, those kinds of bands. And so we, you know, we've had this long period of time to just absorb all these different influences and, uh, and from other genres too, you know, the, a lot of, I think what makes the album pretty unique is that we, we meld pretty uh, traditional song structures into the way that they were written. And so that, that a lot of that gets taken from like classical music and other types of alternative, uh, you know, rock and metal and stuff like that. And so uh, yeah, that's that's how it came about. It's just the product of all our different influences, and each member of the band brings their own influences to the mix. It, they, you know, so it's it, that's what came out. Perfect, perfect. Mm -hmm. It's a perfect mix for sure. Mm -hmm. So now that you say about the of the lyrics and the way you write your music, I see on your Spotify page that you have the clear goal of reaching the ethics of technical metal. So tell me about your writing process. What comes first, the idea or the technique? So uh, I actually wasn't involved in a lot of the writing, but I, oh, okay. from what I understand from how it, w it worked, because I've asked them about it because I was curious too. Okay. Um, uh, the, all the lyrics were written by our guitarist, Daniel. And uh, he wrote them after all the music was written. Basically, after, if I understand correctly, most of the songs were written and recorded. Uh, that's when they kind of approached the task of writing the lyrics and crafting the sort of stories that went with the songs. Mm -hmm. And um, and yeah, so I, I guess in that to answer your question, I think the technique comes first. the the song The compositions and the song structures came first. That was, uh, if you think about the album, it's very much like a guitar player's album. It's, yes. it's very heavy in, in guitar technique and that's what we want to showcase. And so the vocals and everything else that comes in is kind of supporting that idea. And, uh, and I think that, that uh, the technical aspect is at the forefront of what we want to present and we build everything else around it uh, to support it. Okay, I was very curious of the process. And yeah, it makes yeah. sense, the technical first. Yep, that's, that's what drives everything. <clears throat> yeah, so another important thing on every album is the cover. Is there any story behind Desolate's art? 
Absolutely. So uh, a lot of the songs and the lyrical content, particularly, um, it it takes place. It's kind of set in a in a fictional world that is very much inspired by the geography and the natural features of Iceland, which is where the rest of the band members are from. I live in California, but they are the other five or other four guys live in Iceland in Reykjavik. And so that's, that is kind of the setting and the world in which all the songs happen and the, the lyrical content uh, plays out in this world. And we gave that description to the artist, Eli Ron Cantor, who's kind of a legendary um, uh, metal album cover artist at this point. The guy's very prolific and has done a, a lot of amazing work. And he interpreted uh, that kind of explanation of our lyrical content. And that's what he came up with. And it was pretty much a literal translation of the idea of the world that the songs take place in. So they, uh, it, it's just like this very cold, cosmic, uh, brutal and kind of foreboding scene with the, you know, the planet in the background, but like the icy ocean and, and the big glacier and the shark. And it just, it really encapsulates the whole vibe of, of what we were trying to go for. And so that's how it kind of ties in is it's basically a, a pretty literal adaptation of it. Yeah, yeah, I've been thinking about the all the Iceland concept of, of metal. I'm very curious about the metal scene in Iceland. I don't know, what do you think as a band, it's your role in this new generation of Icelandic metal? I mean, I'm sure you are more into this culture right now that you are a frontman of this band. Absolutely. And I, I have been a friend of the band since basically the beginning, from, not the beginning, but they're from well, their first <laughs> album. I've known them going way back. And so I visited them and I, I have a huge appreciation for the culture. And I actually, I'm, I have Icelandic like heritage, familial relations. Uh, my, on my dad's side goes back to Iceland. So uh, it's, there's kind of that connection as well. But uh, as far as the music scene is concerned, um, before now, before, not now, but before like the last maybe five years or so, I would say as a band in Iceland, you lived in a very small world. You couldn't like, once you got to the top of the scene in Iceland, uh, if you didn't break out and become international, it was really difficult to get noticed. And that's kind of where Ophidia and I was before Desolate, before they were signed to Seize the Mist. Like they kind of uh, took their craft and, and peaked as high as they could go in, the, in, in Iceland and played, you know, all the big festivals there and had, you know, the following that they got there. But um, to really take it to the next level, they had to go abroad. And that was difficult for a lot of bands in Iceland historically up into a certain point. And then I feel like it kind of started with uh, a few years back, there was this massive flood of really legitimate black metal coming out of Iceland. There were a ton of really good black metal bands. Yeah. They kind of broke, broke out and made an impression. And then that, I feel like, paved the way for more types of extreme music uh, that has been, has been in Iceland for years and has just been developing in its own little scene to break out and kind of get on the world stage because... Uh, now all eyes are on Iceland and it became uh, across that same time period, it became a really, really popular tourist destination. And so it was all over the place in the news and like all over our social media, people were visiting there and taking videos and stuff. And so I feel like it kind of coincided with that where um, we, uh, the bands that were spending all this time, you know, kind of hoping to break out finally got their chance. And now it's something that, I feel like the industry kind of looks for there. Everyone's waiting for the next big thing to come out of Iceland. And there's, I mean, uh, not to say that we're one of them necessarily, but we got lucky and were able to, you know, deliver an album to the world. And yeah. before us, there was cult of Lilith on, on metal blade, which are good friends of ours and uh, put out an amazing record last year. And, um, there's all kinds of, I mean, there's the more established bands, Sigur and stuff like that. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, my bandmates, Simon and Ragnar are in a, they have a black metal band called Hellfro. They released an album last year as well on Seize the Mist. And so it's just, it's a really good time for Iceland. Iceland's finally getting their time in, in the yeah. limelight and uh, it's exciting. 
Yeah, and I mean, I think it's gonna increase all the all the tension in Iceland because they are dropping a lot of good metal bands right now. Just Absolutely. Like yours. <laughs> yeah, and it's uh, and it's stuff that's always been there. You know, these guys yeah. have been in that scene for you know 10, 15 years doing mm-hmm. what they do but they now the world is paying attention. So, and that, and it's exciting. And I, I, I'd known it, like I knew it back then. Uh, that's part of why I became such good friends with them because they're all incredible musicians and they were incredible musicians 10 years ago when I met them and uh, it's taken this long. Uh, and I'm so proud of them for, for waiting it out and, you know, waiting for their time to shine because I knew as soon as they got out of their home country, it was going to be this big thing. And it, so far, it's been received really well. So I'm excited for them. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're part of it. So congrats yeah. to all of you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. So you're still living room days, living room days, thanks to the Delta variant. What's next for Ophelia and I? Are you planning uh, a live streaming event or to release some bonus songs of the album? Oh, I wish uh, we we haven't we don't have a whole we have content lined up. So we, we're working on playthroughs. I know we have mm-hmm. several drum playthroughs that are uh, waiting in the wings to be released. Um, uh, we're going to have more content. Basically, we're just going to pump out as much content as we can. Now, yeah. obviously, uh, because of travel restrictions and stuff, unfortunately, as much as I would love to do a, some kind of streaming event, I don't even know if it would be possible for me to, to travel there right now and, uh, and to make that happen. So uh, we're going to do what we can with the restrictions. And I think we have a good, we have a good little like uh, cache of, of content built up that we're going to kind of release slowly over the next few months to keep, to keep people excited about the album. Yeah. And uh, hopefully, you know, as soon as it's possible to do so, uh, we'll take it on the road and start touring, um, you know, when it's safe to do so and we're really looking forward to that yeah perfect i think content is the more important thing about has to be like refreshing on the social media and everything because it's mm-hmm. all we have right now exactly exactly yeah, yeah we're we're really uh, and we knew that we knew that going into the album release that we were gonna have to have a bunch of stuff to keep people uh occupied especially this year because there's so much sick music coming out uh, like it, it's insane every week, you know, Archspire, uh, Obscura, we've got first fragment and the Zenith passage and all these other sick albums that came out before us this year. And, uh, even albums the same day that our album came out, cognitive put out a really sick album too. So it's, um, uh, there's a lot going on. So we need to really fight to keep people's attention. And, um, uh, yeah, so fortunately we did prepare for that. And we, we have some stuff that we, we, we're waiting to release. I think that music Videos saved this pandemic. <laughs> totally. What's that? So what are your influences right now? Like vocal influences you're most involved in? I know, I don't know, like your favorite vocalist bands or someone who inspired you to, to have that voice technique you have that it's amazing. Could you tell me a little bit about it? Absolutely. So um, I'm kind of stuck in the music that I listened to when I was first introduced to metal. So when I was in high school, um, you know, probably around 2007, I graduated in 2007. And so my influences in terms of vocals are kind of frozen in that time period. I think that's when I started doing vocals and uh, I just kind of, so to name some names, I think the first death metal vocalist that I really got interested in was Glenn Benton from Deicide. He's one of my, to this day, one of my favorite vocalists because of how pissed off he sounds all the time. And I think that's really important. And that's something that doesn't, uh, it's not something that you see in every metal band today. A lot of metal bands are really focused on really tight, precise technique and you know delivering the lines uh, a very specific way but i feel like sometimes the, the emotion and the power behind that gets a little bit lost and glenn was always a vocalist who would he just rips and he always sounds so pissed and i love it um that's a big one uh travis ryan from cattle decapitation i'm sure is like every vote metal vocalist's 
it, it, he's in their top five, I'm sure, yeah. because he's so unique. Uh, he's also local. I live in San Diego. He lives in San Diego. So I kind of grew up watching them play. And uh, I was a fan of theirs from like their first EP and stuff. And so a uh, uh, huge fan of Travis's. Um, and, th- you know, there are others. Uh, um, I was a, when I was in high school, I was obsessed with Guar and uh, um, Dave Brocky, Odorous Yurungus from Guar was my favorite performer for years and years. I've seen them like 10, 12 times. And uh, yeah, I never, I would never miss a Guar show if, if it was in San Diego or LA or, you know, if I could drive there in two or three hours, I would be there. And it was, uh, so I took a lot of influence from him, uh, mm-hmm. not necessarily in the vocal style, but in his performance style. Cause he, um, he, uh, their performance, he never took himself very seriously. And it's, a, it's all, it's like a big stage show and they're big, they're playing characters. And so uh, the way he carried himself, as being kind of like not too serious, worked a lot of humor into his performance. Uh, not to say that I'm like cracking jokes on stage, but I like to keep it light. Like yeah. I'm not the kind of vocalist who just stands there and like stares broodingly at the crowd. You know, I like to engage people and stuff like that and, mm-hmm. and talk between songs, you know, within, within reason, you know, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to go on a lecture between every song, but I do like to kind of get that crowd interaction and so I took a lot of influence from, from Dave Brocky in that respect. And I'd say those are probably the top three for me. Um, Glenn Benton, Travis Ryan, and Dave Brocky are my, my big, big influences. And of course, there are so many sick vocalists that have come and gone in, that, in the time between uh, when I was in high school and now that I couldn't even name them. But, you know, I do try and keep up with what all the you know the current bands are doing and and because the the sound evolves you know every year or every couple yes. years when when one dude comes in with like the sick new vocal style it 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 goes out into the scene and it like proliferates and other vocalists start to do it and, and make their own interpretation of it so i love watching that i love watching the t- the techniques evolve but for my personal style it's kind of grounded in what i grew up with and uh yeah that's what I would say about it. And you have an amazing top three, for sure. So thank you. <laughs> before we finish, would you like to tell something to your new fans? Uh, that's a good question. Of course, there's so much I want to tell the new fans. Thank you guys so much for your for your support of the album. I know um, for a lot of people who've been listening to Desolate, it's the first time they've ever heard of Ophidia and I. And, uh, and thank you so much for taking a chance on us in, in, in this, uh, in this realm where there's so much amazing music to listen to, you know, uh, it, I'm glad that we were one of the bands that stood out to all these new listeners and, um, you know, uh, what's going to get us through and get us on the road is that continued support, spread the word, tell your friends, tell your friends who are into sick metal music that you, there's this new band you've been listening to. Um, if, if you're feeling generous, you can purchase the album, um, on season, the mist store or through our band camp, um, engage with us on social media, comment on our posts, share our posts. Um, you know, we, we like to interact with, with the fans and stuff like that. So, um, uh, as much as we can do while we can't see you in person, you know, we can't play for you. So, uh, hit us up, you know, whatever got questions you just want to shoot the shit and uh we're we're happy to do it so thank you thank you first and foremost thank you for your attention and uh um it's an honor yeah that's perfect thank you so much for your time we are Mm -hmm. a media from mexico so we hope to see you soon here playing hopefully the next year (laughs) that would be amazing yeah i would i would love that i mean you guys are um i don't know where in mexico you are but I'm only, oh nice yeah mm-hmm. we're I'm, I'm only uh like 25 minutes from tj right now so mm-hmm. pretty close uh pretty close, close neighbors close. yeah you have to schedule some shows here okay <laughs> absolutely thank you so much for your time john yeah thank you adriana it was a pleasure <laughs> have a good night yeah you too bye <laughs>